Good evening. I'm Kevin Christopher. And I'm Nancy Cox. Thank you for joining us at 6. Before we get to the big story, we want to update you about the breaking news in Leslie County, where a man accused in a triple murder has been indicted. Jacqueline Nye is in the newsroom at the breaking news desk with more. Paul, Paul Douglas Sizemore has been indicted on 16 counts, including murder, wanton endangerment, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, robbery, fleeing and invading police, and two counts of attempted murder. Now, Sizemore was charged with last week's murders of Larry, Norma, and Chad Bowling, as well as the attempted murder of a state trooper. He was arrested following a search across eastern Kentucky, which lasted for several days. A detailed indictment in the case says that Sizemore shot and killed all three with a rifle during a burglary. Investigators also allege that Sizemore stole a Cadillac belonging to Norma and Larry Bowling. He is also accused of shooting at another man, ramming his car into a responding cruiser and shooting at a state trooper. Sizemore bond has been set at $1 million and he is scheduled to be back in court on January 2nd. Back to you. Jack Lanai in our newsroom tonight. For 36 hours in March, police searched every hollow and creek for the man who killed Officer Scotty Hamilton. Now, family and friends of the fallen Pikeville officer know where John Russell Hall will be for the rest of his life in prison. Conroy Deluche has more in tonight's Big Story of Six. Just after 10 o'clock. Yeah, I didn't want to look at him. John Russell Hall walked into the courtroom. He tried to do this profession and have a biased opinion and be honest and loyal to everything, but when you look over and you have so much anger come across you, it's just, just hard to look that way. Nine months and six days ago, lives across Pikeville were forever changed when Officer Scotty Hamilton was killed. This morning, his accused killer confirmed to a judge he pulled the trigger and pleaded guilty to murder and possession of a handgun by a convicted felon. Today was hard, but I'm glad that it's over and uh, me and Brindley, my daughter, can go on with our lives the best we can, and that's what Scotty would have wanted. After Hall's sentencing, Chelsea Hamilton listed three impactful dates in her life. The day she married the love of her life, their daughter's birth date in 2017, and the day she received the call no spouse ever wants. I will probably never have closure. We're going to have to live with this the rest of our life. His name lives on outside his department and throughout the city. Now I will struggle with how to live without him, hopefully with God's grace. For you, Scott Boyd. And in his memory, they will persevere together. Covering the news in Pike County, Conroy Deluche, LEX 18 News. The judge accepted that plea deal and sentenced John Hall to life in prison with no chance at parole. One of them apologized. Another read a statement from the victim's family. But none of that will bring Trinity Gay back to her parents. Today, the four men who were convicted for their roles in the teenager shooting death were sentenced. LEX 18's Michael Burke is in Lexington with that story. I'm sorry for everything that happened. And if you think today's sentencing hearing brought closure for Trinity Gay's mother, think again. Commonwealth wanted a conviction. That's what they got. But Shoshana Boyd doesn't feel as if they got the shooter. Only the accomplices to the tragic events of that night back in 2016. That's when the Lafayette High School track star was shot to death outside the cookout restaurant. For Cesare Taylor, it's a sentence of 20 years. For his role, Devontae Middlebrooks received 15. Taylor's son, DeMarchio, and Lamonte Williams were sentenced to time already served and five years probation. They'll be going home soon. Miss Boyd will be going somewhere else, however, for Christmas next week. Day life goes on, but me and Tyson have to go to the cemetery every single holiday, every birthday. Every single day that this trial dragged on, a reminder of their loss. Um, I'm very emotionally drained. I'm emotional. I'm angry. I'm all of the above. So, yes, I am happy that this, this part is done. The rest will be sorted out over time and by a source more powerful than even a judge. God says has the final say and we truly believe that. Covering the news in Lexington, Michael Burke, LEX 18 News. The Scott County firefighter accused of choking his girlfriend had his bond reduced today so he can be released but under several conditions. LEX 18's Kylan Mills has the details. Stephen Freeman appeared for a video arraignment here inside of a Fayette County courtroom. The judge entered a not guilty plea for him on a charge of wanton endangerment. 
Stephen Freeman didn't say much during this video court appearance a little more than one day after his arrest. According to a citation, Freeman strangled his girlfriend, even lifting her off the ground. Freeman is a Scott County firefighter and worked as a Lexington police officer until 2005. Today, the judge reduced his bond amount from $3,000 to a third party release. Freeman's mother was in court. She said she would sign for him and he could live with her. Freeman will also have to wear an ankle monitor, and the judge had a stipulation concerning the alleged victim. All right, he is to have no contact with the alleged victim. And by no contact, that means no indirect contact, no phone calls, no texts, no Facebook, nothing. He's due to appear in court next on December 28th at 8.30 a.m. for a preliminary hearing. Covering the news in Lexington from the LEX 18 Mobile Newsroom, back to you. Lexington police are searching for the most wanted person of the week. They're looking for 25-year-old Stephen Blakemore. He's wanted for want endangerment and terroristic threatening. Blakemore is about 5'4 and weighs approximately 220 pounds. If you see him, call the Crime Stoppers tip line 859-253-2020 or text your information to crimes. And in that text, write Lex PD, then your tip. There will be no pension reform for at least three more weeks, as last night lawmakers voted to end the special session called by Governor Bevin. Well, now the daunting task falls at the feet of the 2019 legislature, which will include a number of new faces. High school math teacher Travis Brenda is one of the representatives elect who watched the special session from the sidelines. Starting in January, he'll represent Kentucky's 71st district, which includes Rock Castle, Garrett, and part of Madison County. Brenda says he was unhappy with the governor's decision to call the session before the end of the year. The Republican wants to see more people at the table in 2019. I was told yesterday that 10 of the 18 or 19 that was on the committee hearing the proposed bill will not be there in January. And it's a lame duck session. There is no accountability for those that were going to be making decisions. And, and that's, there's something wrong with that. The 2019 legislative session starts January 8th. Republicans maintain super majorities in the House and Senate. That's something of a rarity, a dry couple of days that will be ending shortly. Not quite yet, though. The max track Doppler remains quiet. But as we go through tonight, your evening is OK. The clouds will be thickening up and it stays pretty mild out there. We get you to the pre dawn hours. The first slug of rain begins to arrive. We'll see waves of rain coming through the morning hours tomorrow, not only through tomorrow morning into tomorrow afternoon and later in the day as well as a good soaking rain comes in here. And that'll be with us all the way into Friday as well as if that comes as any surprise that we've got more rain coming. Temperatures have slid now back into the 40s after being into the mid 50s this afternoon. Still 49 Lexington and Frankfurt, Somerset, London, Monticello still staying in the 50s. It's 46 in Mount Sterling. That is not a bad afternoon evening at all. Uh, you're looking at the rain around tomorrow. Temperatures may squeak up to around 50 with that rain. But does it stay all rain? We'll talk about that possibility in just a minute. Mm. Uh -huh. All right, Bill. More than 600 men walked through the Hope Center today and walked out with new warm clothes and bags full of toys. Their annual Christmas party gives some of the center's parents a chance to play Santa. Tiffany Jackson has that story. Santa has come early for the folks at the Hope Center. Everything is donated, everything is brand new, and the guys absolutely love it. Wednesday was the center's annual Christmas party where homeless clients, mental health clients, and men in the drug and alcohol recovery program received a little Christmas cheer. The homeless clients were able to get socks, hats, gloves, scarves, and anything they need to last through the winter months. There was also a large selection of toys. The clients who are in our drug and alcohol recovery programs are here full time and they don't have jobs, so they don't have incomes. Uh, so this provides them an opportunity to pick up a toy for their child. From, I mean, like newborn and toddlers all the way up to like preteen. James McCown helped out clients, but he's also one himself. I got a black bag full. I'm going to feel like Santa Claus walking through the front door. He has two kids and a third on the way. He says this opportunity means the world to parents like him. It's been a long time since I've ever been able to do anything for my kids. So, I mean, it's just... It's super awesome. I'm so grateful for what this place has done for me. Covering the news in Lexington, Tiffany Jackson, LEX 18 News.
The Hope Center is also hosting a second party for the women in their recovery program Friday. More than 100 women and their kids will get a chance to shop. <laughs> Central Kentucky's Father Christmas continues to spread a lot of holiday cheer. And a lot of laughter. Yeah. Watch as Father Jim Sitchko makes Christmas come early for unsuspecting strangers next on LEXAT News at 